Okay, so today we are going to introduce equipment that is used in the school labs. We're going to learn the names and the uses of the common equipment and then explore safety tips for these tools. Now, the uses of lab tools is to do multiple things. Many of the items can be used for different, different purposes. However, they are to measure, to test, to magnify, to dissect species, transfer substances, to separate substances, to clean the tools, as well as for safety reasons. So here is the first item. It is called a triple beam balance. This item is used to find the weight of objects. So if you wanted to measure uh, the weight of an object, you would put it on this plate right here and then you would move these sliders until everything is balanced here that then you would just add up all of the weight and you would get your final weight. The second item is a digital balance and this is similar to the last item that we just saw which was the triple beam balance however this is digital so all you have to do is put your item on there and it will digitally tell you how much something weighs. Now usually we tend to use this for items such as um, substances like powders or something small amounts of. The third item that is probably very familiar to you that you have used in your other classes are measuring devices for length or height and these are rulers or measuring tape. Okay, So it's to measure heights and distances. For the microscope, we use the microscope to look at smaller specimens or smaller objects or pieces of a specimen. We put them underneath the lens right here so that we can look at the cellular level, what's going on. Number five, the microscope slide, and this is what goes on the microscope this is where you would put your specimen that you're looking at underneath the microscope so that you can see what's going on. It's used to prepare a specimen for microscope, microscopic investigation. On top of the microscope slide, you put one of these little square pieces and they can either be plastic or glass and you cover your specimen so that way um, you would put water in between the glass slide and the slide cover so then that way when light goes through it in the microscope you can actually see more clearly what you're looking at. So that is the cover slip and it's to cover the specimen and lock it in. The pipette, they are plastic and they have, it's almost like a little straw right here and liquid. Um, it is for the use of adding small amounts of liquid usually most likely used for water. This is another kind of pipette, but it's actually called a dropper. And it has plastic bulb up at the top, and this is glass. Most of the time, this is a glass. It's used for adding, again, small amounts of liquid. The thermometer, we all know, measures temperature. Most of the time, these are very breakable, very delicate, long, skinny, and made out of glass. This is called a scooper, and it's used when taking out powder substances from its container, so that way uh, you keep the container of powder or substance pristine and, uh, and pure, so then that way you're, you're, just, you're not using your fingers to take out the substance. Safety goggles, a must. It's used to cover the eyes and to protect the eyes from, um, from getting hurt if any kind of substance or anything bad happens in the lab. And it's for your protection, so definitely wear it when the teacher says that you must. The graduated cylinder is used to measure liquids. And I know you have seen them in the, in the lab, so we'll, we'll be using that throughout the school year. Test tubes, they are usually glass, but they can be plastic, and you can also put a stopper on these. And these items are used to hold and test small amounts of chemicals. And what you'll notice is that these uh, test tubes are placed 
in plastic holders, and this is called a test tube rack. This one is plastic. It holds the test tubes. Also, um, what you'll notice with the, the test tube, sometimes you don't want to hold it with your, with your fingers. Um, these are test tube holders and they're, they're metal and they look um, like kind of like tongs and so they're also called test tube tongs and they're used to hold test tubes and usually this is when, uh, for example, if you're heating the test tube, this is how you would want to heat it. You wouldn't want to hold it with your fingers while you put it over a flame. This object here is called a ring stand, and it is an object that is used to hold a container above a Bernsen burner. So, for example, if we had a fire source right underneath the ring, we would put the object that is being heated right above it. This item would go above where this ring stand is. So you would actually put that gauze on top of here. So this is called a wire gauze, and this is used to support a container on a ring stand. This is the Bunsen burner, which is the fire source. Uh, it's used for heating. And so if you've ever asked me, sitting at the desk in the, in the science lab, what are these weird looking things on my table, this Bunsen burner, the cord, would go into those strange two uh, metal prongs that stick out on the table, and that would supply the heat, the gas, for this Bunsen burner. These glass items are called beakers, and there's various sizes, everything from small 50 milliliters all the way to 1,000 milliliters. And these are used for rough measuring uh, and pouring of liquids. Here's another glass tool that we use, and it's called an Erlenmeyer flask. It holds, mixes, and heats liquids. Um, notice that the, the opening up at the top is a lot smaller than the the beakers that we just saw in slide 19 and this allows for if you were heating the substance for less evaporation of the liquid and it can also be sealed um, we could put a cork here for sealing the uh, sealing the the flask so that way the less evaporation again these items are called beaker tongs and they're used to handle hot beakers so remember the beaker was that glass looking cup and so if it were hot, you would use this in order to pick it up and transfer the beaker. Another object that we use, um, it's made out of rubber, are called hot hands. And these hot hands you would use it kind of like an oven mitt that you would see in your parents' kitchen, right? And, and what you would do is you would pick up the beaker and it would not harm your hands because uh, it, it's insulating. So it's another way to transfer uh, or touch hot beakers, glassware. This item here is known as a funnel and it's used when pouring liquid into a small container. And I'll show you in slide 24, this is another um, funnel. And this funnel is actually, I think this one's glass, but what we're looking at here that's inside of the funnel is filter and so the filter paper is for objects uh, for substances like if you have like sand mixed in with the water or some kind of gritty stuff so it's used when pouring liquid that have sediments into a small container this these items here are known as forceps also can be termed tweezers and they're used to handle small or thin objects sometimes used in dissection um, but i also like to use it in separation of substances and then, of course, there are other common items that we use. Uh, so there's tons of things, like we use lamps in the science lab. We use measuring teaspoons and flashlights and aluminum foil, Q-tips uh, or cotton swabs, straws, tea lights, tape, batteries, scotch tape. We use spoons, and we also use matches. There are many other things that we also use that I have not placed here, but these are the most common items that we use in, in the science lab in sixth grade, as well as throughout your secondary education. Now, now that you've watched the video on the lab materials, your home fun is to choose five objects that you hope to use this year. 
And for each object, so remember you have to choose five objects, you need to do four different things. So first, you need to choose an object, you need to draw or sketch the object, you need to name the object, and then the third thing says you need to give the use of the object. The last thing, you might need to do a little research online if you don't know it off the top of your head, but number four says you must give one tip to be aware of when you're using the object. So, for example, here's mine. Here's one of my objects that I chose that you cannot choose because it's actually not even in there. Um, so here's an example of this strange looking tool that looks kind of like a butter knife, right? But its name is called the scalpel. And it's used to cut di uh, like specimens when you're dissecting. Okay, and one of the tips, safety tips, is that you need to hold the scalpel like a pencil and you need to make short, small cuts until the, uh, the cut that you're trying to make is as large as you want it to be. So, there is an example. You need to do five of these, have them in your notebook, ready to show me for a stamp. This is your home fun assignment, so um, here it is again. Choose five things, and for each five things you need to do these four things. So I should see one of these, two of these, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's like 20 things. So get ready.